What's up guys, Jeff Cavalier, AthleanX.com. Today I want to talk to you all about the ab wheel rollout and more specifically, how to nail it every single time. Because if you don't, this exercise does not belong in your ab training routine. For two reasons. Because at best, you're looking at a major waste of time. And at worst, you're looking at an exercise that could actually cause damage to your lower back. But if you do get it right, it's a great exercise that belongs in your training routine. So here's what you want to do. You want to focus on three separate areas. One is the setup. The second part is the execution, and the third part is pulling the wheel back to you. Those are the three areas. Obviously, every exercise is made up of those three components, but in this case, people tend to screw up in those three areas, so we want to cover all of them. So when you're getting set up for the exercise, the first thing you want to do is focus on the position of your back and your hips. And the key here is that you don't want to follow some advice where people tell you to flatten everything out in one straight line. Because what you're doing here is you're immediately taking this exercise and making it solely one thing. And that is, for, at least as far as the abs are concerned, and that is an anti-extension move. And while that is a tremendous component of this exercise, it's not the only one. So when you get into this position here and then you roll out, which is what people will advise you to do, they're basically letting the lats do all of the work. While this could be a great lat builder, especially if you don't have weighted options at home, that's not the focus of the move. We're not doing straight arm pushdowns here to build our lats. What we're trying to do is develop the strength in our core. And we know that one of the functions of the core is to flex the spine. But it doesn't mean we have to get an overflexion of the lumbar spine. So watch what I'll do instead. I'll do more of a cat and camel here, right? Where I'm pulling up, tucking the upper abs up into my chest. That's the feeling I want to have. And I'm not rounding out the lower back excessively here. Okay, all I've done is bring it more into a neutral position from an anterior tilt. So now when I'm in this position, I want to keep it there. So now we go right into the second part, and that is the rollout. Now the rollout, what we're focusing on here is to go out only as far as you can handle. Because the main goal here now is to maintain that tightened core and prevent a quick, fast overextension of the spine. Because that's when we start to do damage to the lumbar spine. So when we go out, we go out only as far as we can handle. Beginners might only go out as far as I'm showing you here. Whereas the more advanced, you can go all the way out. As a matter of fact, you can even hold it for a short period of time when you're out there, and then come back. So you go out as far as you can handle, but the key point is to make sure that at no point do your abs give out and your low back cave in. You want to keep that nice and tight throughout. So now here's the key for me. When you're coming back in, what is initiating the pull-in? If you're letting your hips do the work, you're ruining all the good work you established to this point. And that's what a lot of people do. And people will say, I'll do hundreds of ab rollouts. Not if you're doing them right. If you go out and your first move is to pull your hips back so that you're getting a lot of hip flexion to drive the wheel back in, then you're not doing it right. As a matter of fact, you're kind of taking away almost half the exercise as if the same thing as if you just dropped the weights down on a curl and never lifted them. What you want to do here is never let the hips lead the way. Make the wheel and the hips move together. Now you can test yourself and there's a great way to make sure you're doing this right. Watch here what I do. I back myself up against the bench and I start by having my butt in contact with the bench as I sit back. And then I roll out. Now if my butt makes any contact with the bench on the way back in, I didn't do that rep correctly. I let my hips dominate and I let it lead the way. And we already know that hip flexors are over dominant in a lot of ab movements here. This would be just another example of that if we allowed it to happen. So instead, now when I get away from the bench, what you're focusing on here is I get all the way out there and then I initiate the contraction in the abs and I pull back in with the wheel and the hips moving together in sync. And you'll see here that when I get to the top, my butt is no further back than it was when I started. And that is a properly executed ab wheel rollout. And that's what you should be focused on every single time. And guys, it rolls over to all of our ab training. It's not just trying to crank out reps. I think this is where this gets bastardized more than anywhere else in our training is focused on hundreds of reps of ab training. No, focus on quality reps and forget counting how many you're doing. The key is to make sure that all of your reps count and that is when you're going to be training your abs effectively and more safely. If you're looking for a program that puts the science back in strength, that makes sure that you get not just your ab training right, that, but every single thing you do, then head to athlinex.com right now and get one of our Athlinex training programs. In the meantime, if you found this video helpful, leave your comments and thumbs up below. Let me know what else you want me to cover here and I'll do my best to do that for you in the days and weeks ahead. Remember guys, when you're trying to do something good for your body, the last thing you want to do is something that hurts you. As long as you're doing this right, I promise you will get great results from using this wheel right here. All right, guys. Talk to you soon.